Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is part eight of our RPG series. Um, I'm pretty excited today. I'm, I don't know why. Uh, I guess we're getting pretty far ahead, which is pretty cool. Um, but today we're going to be adding projectiles. And this is the asset I'm going to be using. Again, I'll link it in the description below. Um, just to credit the artist. This is the artist. Um, I've seen this artist before, and he has a lot of pretty simple stuff. A lot of it's pretty cheap. A lot of it's um, free. So he has some pretty cool stuff. Um, another asset I found was the Necromancer, and this is free, so I might end up using this in the future. Um, you guys can let me know down in the comments below if you think this is something you want me to do on on video or or what. Um, it doesn't take too much time to change it. Um, we just have to download it and do it together. Um, but other than that, download the Fireball asset, and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do um, is open our UI, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into our font and resize it. So originally it was 16, but now we're going to do eight. Um, you might not have to do this if you chose a different font, but I'm doing this specifically so I can make the text fit our UI um, because I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So I basically halved it and then I'm going to duplicate this. And as you might guess, this is going to be our MP bar. I'm going to rename this to mana bar. I'm going to rename this one as well to MP text. All right, and to organize our project a little bit, I'm going to remake, or I'm not going to remake, I'm going to add a uh, file called player. And I'm just going to add all of the essential things that the player is using. So those things. And let me just double check something actually, because I did not install the Fireball into this project, so I'm going to have to do that now. <laughs> so install the Fireball project or zip. And what we're going to do is close that. I'm going to go back into our project. And we're going to create a folder for that Fireball. We can even make another one. We'll name it um, projectiles. And then we'll put Fireball inside of the projectiles instead, in case we want to add more in the future. And then we're going to drag all these in. I'm going to import them. And bam, now we have a bunch of animations for our fireball. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, or we're going to make a new scene. So to do that, make a new scene. And this one is going to be an area 2D. We're going to add a collision. And then we're also going to add an animated sprite. Let's set up the animated sprites. We're going to have um, hit. And then we're going to have ravel. All right, and then I'm going to, what I did is I did 10 FPS for both of them, um, just for the animation. And for the hit, it's just three frames. So bam, it explodes. And then for travel, we're going to do this. So as you might be able to tell, um, the, the sprite we use or we're using is very big. So uh, I played around with the scale and I ended up doing 0 0.02, which is very small or seems small, but it's actually a pretty good size. And so we're going to save it, call it Fireball, go to our player, projectiles, Fireball, and save it. All right, and just to show you guys how big it is in comparison, we can go into our player, we can drag it in, and you can see how big it is compared to our player. I'm going to leave our player open because we're going to actually need that. And then in our Fireball, we're going to give this a circle shape. There we go. And now we're going to rename this to Fireball. We're going to give it a script, fireball.gd. And then in our area2.gd, um, what we're going to do is, let me just double check what I'm doing. We're going to make two variables. One is going to be the speed of it. And I'm going to do 100. In my reference, I did 150. But I'm going to do 100. And then the another one variable we're going to do is hit equals false. So the speed is the speed that the fireball is going to be moving at. And the hit is going to be essentially checking if we've hit something or not, right? Um, let, me get, let me show you guys what um, we're going to actually be doing anyways. Um, I, I want to get in the habit of doing this. So this is what we will have. So we'll be able to fire fireballs all over the screen. And as you can see, it costs mana. So it costs one mana per fireball. And it does hit the zombies. And it does kill them. So it does also do damage. As you can see, I can kill them with my fireballs now. 
we can also spawn stuff. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's get back into it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if we've hit something. And to do that, we're going to do area entered. We're going to connect that into our script. And then if we did hit something, we're going to boop, boop, boop. we're going to get the node animated sprite and we're going to play the hit animation. And then if once we play it, what we're going to do is animation finished, um, connect it, and we're going to configure. However, this might cause a problem, right? Because we're playing two things. So it might actually queue free when we travel. So once we finish this animation, it'll just get destroyed. So what we want to check for is if the animation is playing the hit animation. So what we're going to do is get animated sprite dot animation equals hit. And if it is playing that, that animation, then we'll queue free, right? All right. Um, Another thing we want to do is we don't want to hit our, um, let's save all. Ooh, I don't know why it closed it all. That's strange. Um, what's going on here? I expected a sign. Ooh, equal, equal, there we go. That's why. Um, we want to make sure that we're hitting our, the hostile zombies and not the allies, right? So there's a way we did this. If we go into our friendly zombie script, as you can see, we've already added that. So this is our piece of code that we're going to be using. If area got dot get parent dot hostile is equal to true, then we'll hit them, right? And then another thing we're going to want to do is um, we're going to set the hit to true in here, and then we're also going to area dot get parent dot health minus equals five. So we actually do damage, right? And just to double check that the health, I spelt the health right. Ooh, I did not, it is not capitalized. Wait, going the wrong thing. Here we go, there we go. Health minus equal five. All right, um, one more thing is pretty important is we want to add a process function. You can probably guess why. Oh, we're gonna add physics process actually. I'm going to take a guess why our fireball needs to move, right? It can't move without a physics process, right? So what we're going to do is position plus equals transform dot x times speed times delta. Um, so I'll explain what the transform is in a second. There's a reason we're adding this. Oh, speed is capitalized. Um, the transform is the transform of our thing, right? So the transform right here. Um, we're going to set that in our player. So in our player, we're going to add something called, not area, sorry, position.2D. And what this guy is going to do, I'm going to lock everything so I can only select the area. It's a little hard to play with the position 2D. It's going to aim for us. And I'm going to rename this to aim, right? So the reason we're doing this is because this little aim guy is going to determine where we're shooting, right? So the X axis, essentially. Um, and so to do that in our player, let's actually change one more thing because um, I never changed this back, but in our, in our input map, for our spawn, we have the left button, right? We're going to rename this to um, project or fire. So fire something. So now we can check for that, right? Let's copy this. And we're going to check for fire. And if we do fire, we're going to shoot. We're going to make a shoot function. So it's going to error because we don't even have a shoot function yet. So let's make it. In our shoot function, what are we going to do? Um, it's pretty easy. We're going to make the fireball. So to do that, let's let me introduce a new concept. Um, what we can do is we can export, export, uh, I think I've explained this before, is to export a variable outside of the script and you can use it and put it here essentially, right? So export packed, packed scene, there it is. You can just enter and it'll uh, finish it for you. Packed scene variable fireball. 
So what this is doing is it's exporting this past scene into this variable. So now if I save it and click our player again, or it's not going to work for some reason. Where is it? That's so strange. Export pack scene. Let me see. Let me save it. Hmm. Let's close it and open up player again. Ooh, interesting. Why isn't it showing up? Let's see. Let's go to our world. Let's see if it's here. It is not. That is very strange, actually. I'm not sure why it's doing that. All right. Instead, we'll, uh, we'll preload it instead. So usually that works, but for some reason it's not today. I guess my computer hates me. We'll name this Fireball. And in our preload, we're going to preload the Fireball. So to do that, we're going to preload it by copying it here. And then let's go back to our function. And what we want to do is make it. So variable, um, double check, variable, fireball. We'll do under case. So there's an error. Fireball dot fireball dot instance. So we're going to instance our fireball. And then we're going to add the child. Uh, we have to add the fireball. And then what we're going to do is fireball dot transform equals little this little symbol aim dot transform. So what this is going to do is it's going to check the transformation of our aim and then aim in that direction, right? So it's going to our goal is to move this around the player, kind of. No, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to aim this in our direction and shoot. So now if I run it, ooh, let's go back to our UI. P bar, let's see. Ooh, there's a reason that erred. Um, let's duplicate our lifebar.ui and rename it to mana bar.ui. And then we'll drag that into here, mana bar. And then in here, we're going to um, replace all the HP with MP, replace all. And then, so that doesn't error. We're going to have to make those variables. So go down here and let's rename this to max MP and then player MP. And the I'm going to put these on top. Actually, I don't know why I ordered it that way. I'm going to put the... Oh my god. Stop. Let me select it. There we go. Player HP on top of the max HP. So the MP will do it 5, and then the max MP will do 10. So for the mana bar, this should actually be ready. So um, mana bar, let's actually make sure we drag this down a little bit. And then for the bar here, what I'm going to do is go into theme override style. And you have to make this unique because you duplicated it up here. You duplicated the bar. So we have to make that unique, go into it, and let's select blue. Now if I play, I can fire things. However, you might notice I can only fire in one direction. And this might work if I like went in front of them. Then it might work. However, we don't want that. We want it to aim with our mouse, right? So to do that, we're going to go back into our player. I'm going to go into the aim. And I'm going to make this a built-in script because it's not very difficult. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uncomment this. And I'm going to type in, um, look at get global mouse position. So now, every time I move my mouse, the, you can't see it, but the aim is moving, right? So it's looking at the mouse. So now I can aim anywhere I want. However, you might have noticed there's an issue. There's a little bug. I, I would call it a bug. You might not call it a bug, but I would call it a bug. Um, the fireballs, and it's a bit hard to see, but the fireballs, let me maximize it, keep going. The animation keeps going even after it's hit, right? So to do that, I actually forgot this intentionally. We have to go back into our physics process and say, if hit equals false, then we'll keep moving, right? So that's why we make it true here, right? So I hope, hopefully you caught that on. 
Um, in the future, I might try to add a little bit of intentional bugs here and there. So I'm going to do this intentional. Hopefully you're following along and seeing that I'm doing things wrong and kind of be like, hey, I got you. Hey, you're doing that wrong. You got to do this properly or whatever. Uh, hopefully you can fix it before I fix it in the video. So obviously, eventually I'll get to it in the, in the video. But um, yeah. Um, another thing, I actually, this is my fault. I didn't even do this. Um, we have to change the collision. So we're hitting the, we're hitting our guys, right? We're still hitting our things. Oh no, it's not. Let me let me check one more time. Oh. Oh, interesting. I suppose it doesn't matter. Okay. I was I thought collision mattered for this, but I guess it doesn't. I guess it'll just keep going through the um, friendly zombie. So that's fine. Um, yeah, so now everything works. Our health, it hits them. Um, let me double check that it stops on impact. So now it stops on impact. That's cool. And I died. And it uses mana. Oh, no, it doesn't. Let me fix that right now. Um, and our player. We're going to check first if our mana, if we have mana. So if game dot layer MP is bigger than zero, then we'll shoot. Another thing we want to do is check if the what do you call it? Um, player MP is bigger than game player max MP. Then if it is, what we'll do is set the MP equal to the player max MP. So what we're doing is check, making sure the MP never goes above 10. So another way, another thing we need to do is give a way to regen mana. So you can make a separate timer for it if you want this timer, the mana regen to be a certain time. In fact, that's probably better. But for now, I'm just going to add it right here. So player mp plus equals one so every time we spawn something we also gain a mana back so let's check here i can now shoot and i don't take a mana i don't know why i didn't code it <laughs> player dot mp minus equals one all right let's save it try again awesome now every time i shoot it uses up one mana and now i can't shoot anymore right once i'm out of mana i can't shoot and i do regen one every second Awesome. So that's all the bugs. Our game works properly now. We can move around and shoot. Um, next video, I'm not too sure what we'll do yet. Um, I might add a few extra things to make the game feel a bit more like a real game. Um, and then we are definitely getting close to the end of the series, um, which is exciting because then I get to start a new one. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you like this video. Hope you like the tutorial. Hope you learned something. Um, subscribe if you didn't already, hit the like button, comment down below. I'll see you guys next time.